so I'm trying as best I can to sit there and enjoy it. But I just can't. You know? It's just, they're the worst. Like, they're the worst. They're the worst. They're the worst ever. It's like rooting for the Yankees. Oh. Or rooting for the Patriots. Or rooting for, like, Alabama. Rooting for Alabama is like rooting for Alabama. Nobody wants to do it. And I sure as hell don't want to do it. And I'm sitting there and I'm just like... <sighs> I'm like, finally the good guys are going to win, you know? Uh -huh. Finally. The evil empire will be squashed. Luke's flying down the tunnel in the X-Wing. You know, Darth was on him for a second, but he got rid of him. Reach out, Luke. And they're going to win. And then he fires the torpedoes, and instead of going down the tube this time, just goes, just, just. Some freshman quarterback comes in and throws a bomb and wins it in overtime. And the whole, the, the evil empire wins. Strike up the band. Darth Vader's down on the field accepting the trophy. I can't stand it. With help from the referees. Yuck. Well, I mean... Sometimes things happen, Brett. <laughs> it's the Brett Dabbard Show! <laughs> Brought to you by Adobe Radio. In partnership with Nice Guy Digital and recorded live in beautiful, rainy North Hollywood, California. On today's show, we've got Sam Daly in studio. You know him from CBS's Madam Secretary, The Daily Show, no, not that one. And he's got a new film, Office Uprising. Now let's get to the guy who's graduated high school three times. That's me! Your new best friend. Mm-hmm. Brett Davern! Listen up, everybody. This is our show. Thank you for joining us live on iAdobe Radio or subscribing on YouTube. Or perhaps you're listening to the podcast version of the show on TuneIn or iTunes. We love you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Also, thank you for telling a friend about this show. I'm getting tweeted constantly, daily, uh, from all of you out there saying, hey, I didn't know about this silly little thing, but my friend told me about it the other day, and I'm sure glad they did. And uh, well, yeah, seriously, I, I get those tweets every day, and thank you so much. So if you're out there and you're listening and you just want to turn to your neighbor and say, hey, there's this fun thing out there, we would appreciate that. And also, if you'd like to shout out a friend on the show, maybe the one that turned you on to the show, just call us. You can do that. Or if you want to like join the conversation, you can call anytime. 1-888-99-IDOBE. That's 1-888-994-3624. The email for the show is bdsfans at idobe.com. Or there's another way you can join the conversation instantly. You can do one of those text messages. One of those newfangled text message things. Katie? I've heard of that. Yeah. The kids, they like to text message. So if you want to do that, just open up iMessage, and then where you normally put a phone number, just type in our email address, bdsfans at adobe.com. So it kind of seems like you're sending an email, but you're not. You're in your text messaging app. Then just compose your text and press send. Once again, that address is bdsfans at adobe.com. All right. Lots of show to get to today. Sam Daly coming in here. He's a busy, busy guy. Lots of things going on. Excited to talk to him about all the things he's got. Madam Secretary, Sundays, 10 p.m., CBS. A movie called Up Office Uprising coming out in February of 2018. That's this year, Katie. It's coming up. And also The Daily Show. But before we get to all that, what's up, boy wonder? What's going on, Brett? <clears throat> and Katie LeClaire. It's National Static Electricity Day. <laughs> <laughs> really? That's what they, the internet tells me. Mm hmm And now when you check on these, there's like three or four of them, right? Uh, yes. And then you pick one. Yeah. So really, it's, it's Katie LeClaire Static Electricity Day. 
Well, no, that it's just that there's life is about options. Right, but at least in terms of the Brett Davern show, you've declared it Static Electricity Day on the show. Oh, I like having that power. Yeah, like you, you, yeah. you, you, like you know, we're always saying who comes up with these sort of around here. Me, you. Mm-hmm. Do you? Know, it's the one I choose to celebrate. Do you remember what the other choices were? Uh. No, don't worry about it. Do you remember? A couple of them. What was it? Um, it wasn't anything good. It was Wait. National Apricot Day. <laughs> apricot or apricot? Oh, apricot. Yeah. Wait. Apricot. Apricot. I don't know. Apricot. Apricot. People say apricot, but. I think I say apricot. Do you? Well, now that you bring it up, yeah. Huh. There's no carpet around here. Otherwise, we could like shuffle our feet along it and then shock each other. Somebody's getting shocked today. Really? I'm shocking someone. Um, I try to celebrate the arbitrary holiday. The boy, my sweet son, he uh, he goes to the park, you know, take him to the park, and he goes down the slides and all the fun stuff. Lots and, of electricity uh, there. Oh, yeah. Well, the pl- slides are plastic, you know, yeah. and they're like U-shaped, you know. And so he we, so he just sits on it to go down, and by the time he gets to the bottom, his hair's all standing up on end, and he's just sitting in there. That's cute. Yeah, it is. It's cute. Static electricity day. I like it. I'm not mad at it. Yep. I'll roll with it. Okay. That's fine. Um, Boy, I am still upset about that football game, though. I'll tell you that. (laughs) I am. Oh, man, I am. Um, All right. Well, let's try listening to some music, though, to put me in a better mood. Oh, (laughs) for the first time in 2018. Hey, kid. Beans on toast. How are you doing? With stinging nettles. Thanks for listening. Thank you for watching on YouTube or listening to the podcast version of The Brett Davern Show. If you were listening live on Adobe Radio, you'd be hearing real music right now instead of this message and whatever song this is. Sometimes the rules just won't let us play real music on YouTube or the podcast. It's not a big deal. Just putting it out there. Back with more show in a second. Follow at Brett Davern Show on Instagram for behind-the-scenes pics of Brett, Katie, and their guests. IW Radio. A sign of the apocalypse! Huffington Post reports that 31% of adults ages 18 to 34 use their phones during half of a show or concert or more. That was a sign of the apocalypse! No, 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 no. It's a problem. No, 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 no. Are you just trying to kill me today? First, I got to watch Nick Saban accept a trophy last night, and now this? Oh, Katie, what is the world coming to? Wait a minute. Half? Spend half the show? Or more. Oh. 31% of the concert goers, ages 18 to 34, spend half the show on their phones. What are we doing, everybody? Not enjoying the moment. Okay, are we all cool with people holding up their cell phones at concerts? I Clear, hate it. Clearly, I'm not. You're no, I not. hate it. Uh, Wonder Hammer? Uh, definitely not. A fan. Here, if okay, you take every, uh, the three. Okay, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. If you take a photo, if you take a quick video, fine. If 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 you and I, to be honest, would prefer the video to be facing you and your friends enjoying the show. That's that's preferred. Yes, but. Yes. I'm not a I'm you can have your phone, that's fine. Mm-hmm. But I understand that it's a, it, that that cell phones hey, they're here to stay. <laughs> <laughs> they're not going anywhere, Katie. But so I get it. And I understand the need to or the uh I uh not the need, but the impulse to want to share the experience with all of your followers and your people, right? I yeah. get it, right? But you're you're right now listening to and you and you Katie are talking to a guy who's never even had a Facebook page. All right? Like I I don't uh, I don't want to do right. it. Like social media for me is a way to um let people out there know what's going on career-wise most of the time. And uh, I try to engage with them. Like last night, I was engaging with people about the football game the whole time. But really, I'm doing that, you know, to like they do want to see your personality. They want to see the personality, but it, also to draw attention to hopefully like bring them in so that then they can enjoy the other things that I do career wise. So that's that's kind of why I use it, you know. But anyway, getting back to the concert thing, uh, 
you know, okay, so Kendrick Lamar performed the halftime show, right? Mm-hmm. And they show the the sweeping shot of the crowd from behind the crowd because obviously the camera's facing him, and all you see are people's cell phone screens yeah. pointed at the thing, and for the entire time, and it's like. How often is that person ever going to watch that video? Never. And they're jumping up. First of all, they're jumping up and down (laughs) so that it's the shakiest footage ever. It's going to sound like crap. But now to your point, now, if you're just putting up like a 10 second, like, oh, this goes to my Instagram story, like, fine, I got no problem with you, right? That's that's okay. But this is the whole show. Just do one and then yeah. put it away, though. Because, you're one, your friends are probably watching on TV, so that's a much better shot anyway. Yeah, but they didn't know that you were there unless you post the video that you were there. But so I that's the no, problem with it. I Everybody's... have no problem with the 10-second video, though. I don't. Hold it up, because, look, we, we've we been to a couple shows. Sure, since we were at Susto. Show. Every single one of us did it. We went to Susto. We went to Fitness. We've been yep. to a couple, like, rock shows. And that's fine. I, I would argue that I'm doing that for my job, though. Okay, but also, these people... So, Susto, like, we didn't know them yet. And then, mm-hmm. yes, to your point, it's for the job so that we can have the connection so that we can get Justin Osborne in studio. Lead singer of Susto. On January 19th. Great. Um, New Pacific, though, like, these are your friends now, right? Yeah, and yeah. so you're calling out your friends at the same time. So I do... I get it for that side of it, but... But again, we're up there. No, but I really think I really think though that if we went to Susto or Fitness or the New Pacific as we have, if if I was not hosting the Brett Davern show every morning, uh, I don't think I would have taken a video of them, even to put it on Instagram story. Even if even if that's not promoting my friends, because we know the New Pacific, right? Like so, even if even at the at the at the um, you know at the risk of not promoting them as a friend. I just want to go enjoy the show. Right. I don't have that impulse to take my phone out. I mean, pretty soon we're going to be going to weddings where you just like look out in the crowd and everyone's just holding up their phone. Are you kidding me? Yes, that's already happening. No. Yes. What? There are, I've been to weddings where they have like framed, nice framed paper that says, uh, thank you for joining us on our day. Please use hashtag blah, blah, blah. Hashtag? All right, whatever. I say it wrong. Yeah. Please use this. But they have a, they have a designated hashtag, which in some ways I go like, okay, so you're trying to filter it so that when you go home later tonight, yeah. you're like, okay, all of these are for well, this okay. wedding. Okay. Yes. All right. People have a hashtag for their child. Look, people are gonna take photos at your wedding. That's not that's not my beef. I'm say, I'm asking you right now because I've never seen this, and I hope that you're not telling me that people are like live streaming the like wedding or. Instagram storying, like videoing is different than taking a photo. I don't know if, I don't know if I've ever seen that. Video feels more invasive. But there is a cool thing. I mean, like, okay, so to play devil's advocate, which I'm not condoning that anybody live streams their wedding from their Instagram story. Uh But I have seen things where like, you know, someone's serving overseas or something like that and you put it on a Skype and then they get to be a part of the experience. Yeah. Which think thankfully technology Look, provides the course, ability to make that happen. Look, of course but where's there are the circumstances. Line? Of course there are circumstances in which it's appropriate. Of to to live stream something or to whatever. Of course. I'm not a robot. I understand that. <laughs> I'm just saying that you're at a you know, just taking last night's performance for example. Like so you're at the Kendrick Lamar halftime show like that's great. And may and and I probably would have taken a 10 second video and then just quickly hit to story or whatever and then put the cell phone in the pocket and enjoy the rest of the thing. That's all I'm saying. But there are people they hold it up the entire time. Yeah. It's so silly. That's a staggering statistic. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. I will say though too that uh we were looking around I was looking around on YouTube one time or something and, and there was a uh, like concert, like shaky cell phone concert footage from like the upper bowl of some arena of some concert or whatever. Yeah. And that video had like I don't know, like fifty thousand, hundred thousand views, and like all the comments were like, "Thanks for posting this." And I was like, "What? This video is horrible. Mm. The sound is bad." The vi- Do like, you remember who the band was? Because I think that makes a difference. Wasn't that oh. we're we're in studio? It was for the boy band I know, thing, I'm right? To Wasn't remember. it? It was. It was, was in sync. Like, it was like an in sync show or a Backstreet Boys. But show it was or the MTV show, right? I think. Anyway. <sighs> Maybe I don't know. But it still wasn't good. I don't look. I don't. And I, you know, it's funny too because like my buddy Marty is a musician, and like his whole thing on this is like, no, no, like video me, like post it. It's promotion. Like it helps me out. And like I get that. I totally get that. It's just the recording the whole thing is a little like. I just feel like you're not there in the moment you know there's a great uh photo i saw like i think 
Banksy's account post it or something Mm -hmm. where it's like a bunch it's like a it's like people at a red carpet maybe or I don't know what they're at but they're like behind a a barrier and they're clearly like looking at something Um, and it's all the young people are holding up their cell phone and there's like an old lady in the crowd too who's just standing there watching and it's like she just is kind of taking in the moment because obviously she's older, and so that well, flip phones don't have great type of cameras thing. either. Yeah, the jitterbug doesn't exactly get good <laughs> video. I don't know. Okay, so right now though, the three of us are in solidarity that you shouldn't be holding your phone the entire time. Correct. Right. Okay. So if anyone out there is listening who disagrees with that, text me. I want to know because right now it's it's. You know, what's the point? Three to nothing. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I wonder what Sam's going to say about it. Also, when you take the story footage real quick, fine, tap on it, type in the artist's name and then hit story quickly. Put the phone away. Like, I don't want you taking that 10 seconds of video, then sitting there looking at your phone, like trying to Why figure out it? the best way to post this and blah, blah, blah. It's like, get it done. Get it over with and enjoy that. But also, you probably paid good money to go to the right. show. Right. So... Like, what are you doing? Like, you're missing it, you know? And you could be missing, like, a spontaneous thing that happens or something. Like, just... And then you're going to go, oh, man, I wish, wish I was recording yeah, that. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> and also, if you go to, like, a Broadway show or something, you, oh. you can't just take your phone out and record the whole no. thing. What do you think about the – so we went – But we're going to get to that point. We went to Chris Rock in Atlanta, and they put your phones in the, like, neoprene magnetic – Yeah. You cannot access your phone, which is great. The stand-up I have, comedy shows now, they're locking okay, up your cell phone. But I, I was going to say, I have – I saw Childish Gambino before the Pharaohs album was released, mm-hmm. and it was very different than his previous album mm-hmm. so they took your phones away ah because they don't want it to get out there yes because the sound was totally different because he was changing everything up now if more artists started doing that would there be uh, musicians started doing that would there be an uprising uh here's the thing people would be upset at first but then what they would realize is what we realized at that chris rock show right and what people might have realized at that childish gambino show which is your enjoyment it goes up tenfold as soon as you give in. You have to give in. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? You have to, you're going to be upset at first that you don't have your cell phone with you. You're going to feel naked. You're going to feel lost. Right. You're going to feel alone in the woods. But then if you give in to it, th- you know what? The engagement in the concerts would go way up. Like the people yeah. actually enjoying themselves would go way up. That, that's why the stand-up comedians do it. It's one so you can't, if they say something crazy or you know whatever, you can't just go tell everybody because they want it to be a surprise for the next Concert stuff, you know, but also the reason they do it, I think a reason they do it more is so that you're actually sitting there listening, you know, paying attention so that you're not, your attention's not. Well, and it's more like theater. Stand up is more like theater. Sure. But how many people do you think get out of, get kicked out of Broadway shows on a daily basis because they're just sitting there trying to record the whole thing because they don't realize it or they don't think about it or whatever. uh, The first act of Hamilton is on Pornhub. All right, let's take a break. <laughs> let's take a break. <laughs> That's amazing. That's a perfect place to take a break. Uh, we'll be right back uh, after this song with our special guest, Sam Daly. Uh, this is Arcade Fire with Keep Running the Car. Keep the car running. That's what I meant. Thank you for watching on YouTube or for listening to the podcast version of our show. We love you. If you were listening live on Adobe Radio, you'd be hearing real music right now instead of this message. Sometimes rules don't allow us to play that kind of stuff on YouTube or on the podcast. Just putting it out there. Back with more show in a few seconds. All right, we got a text uh, from uh, the 816 during the break. Uh, She says, uh, I personally wouldn't be on my phone the whole time during a concert, but I do record a song or two and snap pictures periodically as well. Uh, Love love the show, Ashley. Uh, Here's the thing, Ashley. Sounds like you're on your phone the whole time to me. (laughs) Sam Daly in studio. What's up, bud? What's up, bro? How Good are to you, see brother? you, man. You too, Is man. that too high? Hold on. Let me, oh, okay. let me get that yeah, down for you. There you go. Yeah, I want the people to see your beautiful face. Oh, thank you. Thanks for being here, man. Thanks for having me. Okay, you got to chime in on the concert footage thing. So, you know what I'm talking about. Listen, it's it's really funny now. I have a friend who, uh, 
he goes to a lot of it's not concerts but similar events he goes to a lot of baseball games and he spends sure. most of the time taking pictures of people that are on their cell phones not ah, watching the game at all i love ah. that and i love that that's like a new thing they're like they're what it's like going to a game and watching it on the jumbotron when you've paid to see it live yes it's like what's the point and yes. I, like I, i'm a big dallas cowboy fan uh-huh. and i still have yet to go to the stadium but they have a 60 yard flat screen there now i know crazy so i can't really imagine not Taking my eyes off a sixty-yard flat screen, right. when, yeah. When, uh, yeah. when it's going on live, but no, it definitely is an evolution of how we watch live entertainment. Yeah, it's interesting. Like I, I, yeah, I go to Dodger games and like you know Yasiel Puig's walking to the plate and everyone's just recording it, and it's like you can go back and watch it on TV later. Yeah, they want their yeah. Puig pick. I don't understand <laughs> the briefing. I like that. Yeah, I don't get it. Whatever. Agree to disagree. I'm a grumpy old man, Katie. I've become a grumpy old man. Um, Madam Secretary, Sundays, 10 p.m. CBS. What season are we on now with that? Season four, right now. Wow. Season four. Yes. Nice. Um, yeah, I I recur as this character, Win Barrington, who is a uh, <laughs> Win it's Barrington. It's a great name, Win Barrington Esquire, <clears throat> and it is exactly what it sounds like. I play a very waspy medical marijuana lobbyist, or just marijuana lobbyist. Mm. I guess it's, now it's not just medical; it's medicinal. Uh-huh. Um, but, uh huh. But but uh, it's really fun. I play Daisy's ex fiance. Daisy is played by Bettina Miller. She's fantastic, um, and and it's always really fun. You know, my dad is actually a series regular on the show. Yeah, I noticed that. That's hilarious. Uh, his name is Tim Daly. He's a fantastic actor. I'm he is. I'm a big fan. I'm a little biased. Oh, but, um, <laughs> big fan. Um, Sopranos. Sopranos. Wings, Wings obviously. Way, from way back. Oh, oh yeah. Wings. Big fan. But, uh, and, you know, we do this web series together. The the the, the real Daly show <laughs> is what we call it. I love that. People are always like, oh, the Jon Stewart. No, no, no. The D-A-L-Y show. I love um, that. But it's actually... We just, it started as sort of a fun joke between, we just wanted to do something together, and yeah. my buddy Ben Shelton, he's an incredible writer-director, he came up with this thing, and uh, we play sort of fictionalized versions of ourselves, he's more the goofy one, I'm sort of the straight guy, but it's all about him teaching me that if I ever want to become a, a famous film and television star like him, then I really need to be a little less douche. Oh, that's hilarious. That's why your Twitter douche. bio says that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Uh-huh. So if there's one thing in life, everything should be a little less douche. But we're, we're really excited because <laughs> we're actually going to shoot a movie together for the first time Ooh. this year. And ben, ben Shelton wrote it, and he's directing it also. But it's called Just Not Right. And it's about a dad that gets engaged to his son's ex-girlfriend. Nice. <gasps> it's just not right. That's, yeah, just not right. You can fill in the blanks from there. Oh, I love that. Yeah. That's funny. All right, so let's go back a bit, and then we'll catch back up. So, yes. let's 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 talk let's talk some marijuana for a second. Okay, just hey, because it. it's in the news and stuff. I absolutely right. So your character on there, and I don't know if maybe it'll evolve on the show because mm-hmm. it's kind of happening in the world right now too. So medical marijuana at first, that's the thing. I'm from Seattle. I think Washington and like Oregon and things were like some of the first states to adopt like the medical. Marijuana yep. and California had it forever. Uh-huh. When I first moved to California, everybody had sleep anxiety. Yeah, well, little known fact: California or... had marijuana before medical marijuana. Too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No kidding. Um, They're very like, humble yeah, about it. Exactly. All of my friends had uh, back problems or yeah. whatever. Yeah, you know, glaucoma. Um, but then, yeah, exactly. But now. Uh, as of the first, it's like legal recreationally in California. Do, does any of us know what's going on know. or how this works? Well, it was funny. I had a friend, my friend from Hawaii, actually. He he called me yesterday and he's coming into town next week. He's like, so what's the deal? Can I just go to a store? Mm-hmm. And I, I'm not sure if it, if there's there's like one or two stores in L.A. County, I think, that actually Okay. Sell. Oh, really? Yeah, not that I've done any research or anything. Uh, but, uh, uh. But, no, no. But I think it's still sort of slowly becoming... If you're over 21, you can walk into the store. But, but the medical places are still there, probably? They're all still there. Okay. They're, like, still the most highly functioning Interesting. Uh, uh, dispensaries, I think. But, mm. I, you know, I, I really don't know how it all works. I'm sure, but, you know, by by halfway through this year, every you're going to yeah. walk to the yeah. corner store and it'll be like... I've I, I've said it on the show before. I It's a weird... I don't know how I escaped it or have gotten this far, but I've never... I've never tried... I'm not even making it up. I just have never partaken or tried i'm not even like i'm not like clinton or anything right now like i didn't inhale it's like no i never even tried anything so i don't i don't know how any of it works 
But I'm interested in it, and it seems weird. I know Washington State adopted the recreational thing a while ago. I don't know how it works up there. I know Colorado has, and now it's like weed tourism and all kinds of stuff. I, so I guess that's what we're in I was for talking to here. my cousin who lives in Colorado, and he says, like, like – the housing cost in Colorado is the same as it is in Los Angeles now because people are moving there it's booming, to huh? smoke. See, Interesting. That's, yeah, that's wild to me. Huh. It, I, I just, you know, for me it's like if they can make so much money in taxes off of it. Yeah, then, what's, yeah, what's, then what's why the not? Oh, yeah, totally. No, I'm, I'm not one of these guys who, like, has never done it and is also like, you shouldn't either. Yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. whatever. I, I don't care. I mean, I'm kind of like that, but... uh yeah, I don't know. It's just inter- I didn't know if any of us knew how it worked because I just know I it's know. legal now, but I don't know how it – anyway. Well, and then there was the thing in the news the other day that they came out and they're, like, rolling back the laws again on, on so mm-hmm. that it's not federally legal. I, I yeah, it's, like, not that, federally yeah. legal, but it's state legal, and then the feds can come in at any time, but the, I don't know. So I was so – the whole point was I was going to say is that have you heard or have you, the producers or writers or anyone talked to you about are we going to start on Madam Secretary talking about the recreational use – in conjunction with the medical use. You know, I, I sure hope they do. I think mm-hmm. that's good. It's funny because I remember when I auditioned for the role, it, it, I, I put on this really nice suit, this three-piece suit. My wife was like, what are you doing? I thought you play a, a medical marijuana lobbyist. And I said, yeah, well, these lobbyists aren't like yeah, these schleppy stoners. No. These guys are your future politicians. These guys oh, are, yeah. you know, sharks. Oh, and, they're in uh, it for the green. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> literally and <figuratively. laughs> the but, other um, The other green, yeah. But it's funny because... Although that is part of Win Barrington's character, which is just the funniest <laughs> name of all time. I feel like Win Barrington's going to be all over this uh, 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 investment yeah. in recreational weed. But I think they need to, to to bring that. They could very easily tie that into a fun new storyline. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for so. sure. Yeah, most definitely. Um, we were talking during the break, too. We know a lot of the same people. I actually kind of grew up with uh, Eric Bergen. Yeah. Who's on Madam Secretary, oh, too. Oh, he's great. Oh, yeah. We grew, kind of grew up being in plays and stuff together and you, all kinds of stuff. Are you a singer, stuff, so. too? He's oh, yeah, yeah. Singer. Well, he's 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 yeah. a singer. I'm an actor who can sing. Well, yeah. If you're in Jersey <laughs> Boys, you're, le- you're oh, a yeah. legitimate singer. No, he's legit. He puts on concerts all over well, the yeah, place Him and stuff. Patina, who plays Daisy, oh, together okay. they do a lot of concerts, yeah, yeah. too. But he's, uh, do you get in on this action? No, I, I, I <laughs> sing to myself in the shower. That's about as far as That's I all you need. It's okay. Hey, I like it. <laughs> it works for me, okay, Katie? Get off my back. That's, I think, what he's saying to you. Yeah. But, and Eric, you know what's something interesting about Madam Secretary? It's a fun fact. Is probably the tallest group of male actors. Yeah. He's really tall. He You're is, really tall. I'm tall. You I'm six are. Foot three. Yeah. Um, who, who else? Jeffrey Arend is like six foot three. It's like the poor ladies on that show. Apple boxes everywhere. I mean, some apple boxes here and there, but it's it's just it's refreshing to see tall actors. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> you go, you probably walk on the set of uh, Madam Secretary, and all the all the short people and ladies might be on apple boxes, and all the dudes have their shoes off. Yeah, <laughs> like what's happening? Or they stand. I usually sometimes now it doesn't happen often. Uh-huh. Ooh, I love these new mic stands. Look at this. I, I can like stand that. now. Um, so sometimes it doesn't happen often, but sometimes I'll I'll be taller than the person I'm in a scene with, and I stand like this. Oh, you, you stand with evil. the legs really far spread apart. Brings you down a few inches. Mm. Little known, little known Do fact. Do you feel like people, that changes your performance at all, though? Not at all, actually. No, but I your kinda, stance has oh, a I lot. I like it, though. It's more grounded. It's more grounded. I'm more stable this way. I like it. So (laughs) all all the people out there listening, a lot of times when you're watching a scene, if if there's a height discrepancy, just picture that one of them is probably standing like that. Hey. I learned that trick from an older actor, though. So I, know I feel like it changes your oh, posture. It changes. Oh, it's boy. it's My effective. My is always when they ask you how tall you are in auditions. Though. Mm. And, mm. And I, you know. Do you lie? I'm six one. No, I do. I do yeah. sometimes. Sometimes I say I'm five eight, and they're like, "Oh, come on, you're not five eight. I'm <laughs> like, "Well, if Tom Cruise can be six three, I, I can be five eight. Totally. You know, they dug trenches magic. in the Last Samurai for the women to walk through, so that Did he they would be. Really? Yeah, because oh, they would do like walk and talks. Fun. Funny. And I always wonder, trench, like the whole walk and talk. I'm always, I'm always thinking in auditions though when they ask, um, "How tall are you?" Mm-hmm. Right? Because they do most, most every time actually now. Yeah. Um, I'm always thinking like, which way do they want me to go on this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. Who have they already cast? That's mm. why you just answer honestly. No, I just go six feet, <laughs> and then I have a look on my face of like, "Go ahead, challenge me." I'm, I'm six feet. Stop, yeah. stop yeah, staring at me. Yeah, why not? Um, let's listen to some music, and then I want to get into talking about uh, 
well, I want to I want to know what it's like to grow up with a dad who's on TV all the time Absolutely. and all those kinds of things. And I also want to talk a little Office Uprising. But before we do, this is. Mm-hmm. 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 This is I'm Shaken uh, by Jack White. Thank you for watching on YouTube or listening to the podcast version of The Brett Davern Show. If you were listening live on Adobe Radio, you'd be hearing real music right now instead of this message and whatever song this is. Sometimes the rules just won't let us play real music on YouTube or the podcast. It's not a big deal. Just putting it out there. Back with more show in a second. IW Radio. You can listen to The Brett Davern Show anytime. Just search for it on your favorite podcast app, but especially the Adobe app for iOS. Oh, or tune in. Or tune in, <laughs> or wherever, wherever you can find it. <coughs> oh, excuse me. So, all right, let's talk about Office Uprising. Office Uprising. Tell me all about it. Office Sorry. Uprising. Office Uprising is going to be a, a, a fun one. It's, uh, it's a total action comedy. Mm-hmm. Um, it stars Brenton Thwaites, who was the new sort of young, hunky Orlando Bloom character in the new Pirates of the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. It's a new mm-hmm. DC show on CW. Uh, okay. Jane Levy from uh, Don't Breathe. Yeah. And Karin Sony whom I absolutely love and want to give a big shout out to from he plays the cab driver in Deadpool he's in everything mm-hmm. yeah, he's in every mm-hmm. TV show and movie oh yeah time. yeah yeah no he's great he, yeah. he's really great and a really sweet guy and I got to work with him a lot and uh, and I played this this sort of office manager who is just one of those guys you love to hate he's <laughs> he's he's such a horrible human being but he says could everything. we call him a tool we could call him a Tool. We could okay. call him a d bag. You call him a douche. Okay. You can call him. You know. So he's a little more douche. He's a little more douche. He's not a little less douche. No, there's nothing less douche about <laughs> it. So your dad was like, "Hey, Sam, on this one, yeah, full douche. Full douche. Full okay. to 150 percent. Right. But you oh. know, he says really horrible things really nicely, <laughs> um, and, and it's sort of one of those characters. But uh, you know, it was directed by this wonderful director named Lynn Oding, who comes from. The stunt coordinating world. He was actually an MMA fighter. Oh wow! And then he started training um, some some big actors. A couple you might have heard of, Denzel Washington. Mm, who's that? Uh, I'm not familiar. Yeah, he's all right. He'll 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 make it someday. Um, but he ended up stunt coordinating these, he, everything from like The Dark Knight to these Marvel movies, and he's transitioned that into like a very successful directing career. He wow! Does some features and oh, it's cool. And a lot of TV shows, a lot of the Chicago shows and mm. Blacklist and stuff. But uh, so the stunts they were doing was like everything from people flying through walls and shooting flamethrowers and they exploded a pig oh so when set. you say action comedy you mean action oh, there comedy is action i mean it is a it's 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 a quote unquote zombie movie but they're not quite zombies everyone drinks this energy drink it takes place at a weapons manufacturing company <laughs> And they drink this, this, it's, it's called Zolt. It's basically a super Red Bull that turns yeah. you into a killer. Oh, great. And so they're trying to escape the office. Oh, great. And, oh, I'm uh, so excited So for we've this. got, it's we've fun. got people recording concerts all the time, we, yeah. you know, and then now, and drinking energy drinks, and now we have them turning into zombies yeah. to look forward to. It's a glimpse into the future. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Zach Levi is into it, and he's very funny. Oh, but, yeah, yeah, Zach yeah, Levi. Gets oh, that's zolted cool. zolted out. <laughs> so funny. Oh my goodness! Yeah, it's like idiocracy. It's hopefully, or hopefully, hopefully not, not going to come true. Well, we're not too far from it. These oh energy boy. drinks are like, they, they yeah. Work. What's with yeah. the energy yeah. drinks, man? Nobody ever <clears throat> used to need those. Now everybody needs them. Everybody's always needed coffee. Now there's just an alternative. Yeah, I guess so. But everyone would always just have like the one cup in the morning, you know. I just had two. Well, it's like well, remember iced coffee? What now? It's nitro cold brew. Cold yeah. brew. Then it was <laughs> yeah. cold brew. Now it's nitro cold I brew. Yeah, but nitro's delicious. It is good. Idea. <laughs> Oh my I gosh! You guys, I had a iced coffee one time. Mm-hmm. All right, I was in Georgia, in like Peachtree City, Georgia, or no, Smyrna, Georgia. I don't remember where I was. I was in whatever the town is. They shoot The Walking Dead. I was not shooting The Walking Dead, unfortunately, but I was just visiting. <laughs> anyway, I go to this coffee shop it's right on Main Street. Oh, it's actually kind of cool. You do you watch Walking Dead or did you? you know, Ever? I, I've seen a handful. I'm actually I need to watch. Well, they get to this town. It's like the the. Mm-hmm. 
Mm. Watch the first three seasons. First three yeah, seasons. I, I yeah. quit now. It's as soon as I saw a tiger, I was like, I'm out. I'm done. Oh, there was a tiger. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Now, now I'm done. But anyway, they get to this town at some point. There's like the governor's town or whatever, and it is like a real town in Georgia. Anyway, I was there. I was on Main Street. There's this little coffee shop. I go in. I'm like, oh, just give me a uh, you know small iced coffee. Yeah. Easy peasy, right? They gave me this iced coffee. I'm drinking it. And a half an hour later, I thought I was going to die of a heart attack. Like, my heart was beating so fast. I was feeling like it's weird, good. sharp pains all over my body. I was like, what is happening? And then, so I like, was asking my friend who lives there, I was like, what is happening? He's like, oh, that's not iced coffee. That's like this cold brew, whatever, nitro thing. Like you were saying, yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah. oh, it's way stronger than iced coffee. And like for two <clears throat> days, I didn't feel right. That was too much. Well, they, What's I, happening? I ordered a nitro, uh, a venti nitro cold brew at Starbucks. They don't even they said, sell that, no, do they? They said no. They, yeah. You can't do oh, they that. said no. They said no. Yeah. We only make grande. Oh. They said you can get it in a venti glass with ice, but um, no. What's that, yeah. be too much? Candy. What's more scary that they won't? Or we don't want to overserve. No. Maybe I know the answer <laughs> to my own question, but what's more scary? The fact that they won't even give it to you, or if they said, "Well, we can give it to you, but you need to sign this release first. Yeah, well, I, I think those Which are equally one? as scary. Yeah. I'll sign the release. <laughs> give it to me. You're ready. I'll try it. You're getting an go. IV of, of caffeine, right? There's like these burger places that have like the, the triple heart attack burger, you know, like these like bars or pubs, and they make you sign releases before they give I it to you. I kind of like the extreme food thing. I'm oh, all right with it. Oh, man. I liked it too. So, it was so unfortunate when Man versus Food, when he like, yeah. he went so hard the first three seasons that they were like, all right, Adam, you got to pull it back or you're going to have a heart attack. Yeah. So he's, well, all like, he's all like skinny. He signed though. on for it. Yeah. Come on. There's a yeah. new guy There's doing new guy. it. There's yeah. a new guy doing it because they were like, well, you got to swap these guys out every couple years. I was watching the uh, Jonathan Bennett Times Square New Year's Eve web mm -hmm. show. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And uh, the new guy was on it and he. <laughs> He was talking about the craziest things that he's eaten. I don't. Okay, I am down with the crazy food craze, but I don't. I don't want the job. But I do feel like if you signed up for it, then you you have to do it. I don't know if I'm you down with it. Away. I went to the uh, Sam. You gotta tell me what you think. I yep. went to the L.A. County Fair yep. a couple years ago, especially with the kids. Like having the kids, I was like, oh, that's something fam fried butter. families do. And yeah, we went to the. They had fried deep fried guacamole. They had they had burgers that the buns are donuts are frosted oh, glazed on. donuts. Come on, the Austin in me loves that. Oh, come on! All right, so Katie's on team. That's okay, Sam. See, I, I'm I, I, I'm down to try everything once, but it's like I, what what happened to just guacamole? Guacamole. You can have that, but if you go to the county fair, it has to be fried. It has to be fried. It has okay. to. Do, that's like part of the culture of it. How do you even deep fry guacamole? I don't even know how that. You freeze possible. it first. And what? then you put a batter around it and you drop it in the oil. Oh I got this figured God. out. I got and then you. What do you just eat it like a like an apple? You just <laughs> crap all or some good guacamole. Like what is? It's that? basically the same thing as fried butter. It's just fried fat. Yeah. Well, this was great. You guys like this. So I was at uh, this Mexican restaurant Seoul on Friday. Mm -hmm. I have a ten month old son, mm -hmm. and he loves any food you put it in front of him and he is shoveling it into his mouth like and but and way more adventurous that. eater than me he will eat everything except for butternut squash that is not that's where he draws the line <laughs> draws the, yeah, he draws the line, draw the line hard the pass yeah but he um but he was eating his beans and he i mean he'll eat like an entire bean and cheese burrito wow. I, I take like time lapse videos of it to prove that he is <laughs> eating this burrito the size of his head but uh i look to my left and he had finished his burrito, and he stuck his hand in the extra spicy salsa. Yeah. And I turned around, and he shoveled <gasps> it right into his mouth. Uh -oh. And that was like full-blown five minutes of panic. His really? first spicy food. Oh, my oh. God. It was Because what do you do? It's like you don't you, you, you you try can't some save water. It, yeah. You're supposed to drink milk, I think, yeah. for yeah. spicy. Yeah. But he hasn't even had real milk yet. He's still, you know, breast milk and formula. So it... it uh, yeah, it was it was a sad five minutes, but he survived. It was sad, Aww. but it, the good part was when you looked at him and you said, "Hey, welcome to the world, kid." Yeah, yeah you're alive. You know, you, sometimes you try things and oops. Yep. Yeah, it's a good lesson. Yeah, Learn don't that stick one your early. Hand in a random thing and <laughs> shove it into your mouth, kid. <laughs> oh man. So uh, speaking of kids, though, what were you like as a kid? So getting back to like growing up, I mean, your dad is on TV. Did you were you aware of that? When did you become aware of it? So so both of my parents are actually actors. Right. My dad's name's Tim Daly. My mom's name is Amy Van Nostrand. Um, and I thought they were insane growing up. I literally, I was not a kid actor. I was not, I played sports growing up. I used mm -hmm. to make fun of my parents for making faces mm -hmm. uh, as a profession. <laughs> but like, but my aunt, Time, was an actress. My Both of my dad's parents were actors. Like, 
and and I'm sort of bi-coastal, but I but I really grew up primarily in a, in LA, and and everyone's parent was an actor, you know. I mm-hmm. went to school with Nate Lithgow, John Lithgow. You know, was I just like, I just put two and two together when you said I didn't. Tyne Daly. Tyne Daly. Oh yeah. Auntie Tyne. Of course. Yeah. Super talented. S- yeah. Brilliant. Yeah, she's she's gonna be a, she's gonna have a career one day. <laughs> no, but so for me it was just wow. sort of that was. Uh, do you remember though becoming aware that that's what they do? Like when do you remember having that moment of like oh not everybody's family is on TV, it but was, mine is. It was when I moved. I went to high school in Providence, Rhode Island, mm-hmm. where I was I was born. But uh, I moved like fifteen times before high school because mm-hmm. we went wherever they worked. Um, but I moved back there and, and, and I remember when I visited the school, I was still living in LA and I visited and I was sitting in, you know, a chemistry class or something. And one of the freshmen came in and was like, did you hear the guy from wings is here? <laughs> like, and that was, and that was really a funny thing. We used to call my dad GFW growing up because people were like, that's the guy from wings. The guy from wings. So yeah, it wasn't Tinder, it was GFW. <laughs> oh, that's funny. But, um, but, and I realized, oh, like. Because, again, in L.A., it seemed like everyone was mm-hmm. either an actor themselves or was the kid of an actor. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I went to Brentwood School where, like, the Savage Brothers went. Right. Wow. You know, I, I was at Jonah Hill's Bar Mitzvah when he was Jonah Feldstein. <laughs> yeah. That's what it, That was his name in middle school. And I was like, Jonah Hill? Who's Jonah Hill? Um, oh, that's funny. He, who uh, is the funniest man of all time. Yeah. But um, so it really never dawned on me till I till I got to high school that, that's it, that everyone's parents weren't actors. I just right. thought that was like, that was like huh. a thing. That's um, funny. And I'll never forget when I told my parents I want to be an actor, they were like, are you are you okay? Did you find medical marijuana? With us? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, come on, it worked out for you guys. Yeah, What's it did. Wrong? And now they're super supportive, and it's great. But it's uh, but yeah. So it never just it, it's never it's never weird if that's all you've ever known. So right, yeah. right, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, that makes sense. Uh, let's go to the last thing to do with you here. Okay. I have two note cards, one oh. in each hand. All right. One of them's orange. One of them is purple. We do this with everybody. Okay. They each contain a different line of questioning, but you are going to determine which line of questioning I ask you because I'm going to put them behind my back, and then you're going to tell me right or left. I'm going to say you're left. Ten, ten que- well, no, it's not ten questions anymore. It's a new year, everybody. Seven questions. Seven questions. <clears throat> I've edited them. Are these rapid fire? Are they one word? Uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, they're, they're, they're as quick as the answer comes to you. Okay. Number one, most used emoji. My most used emoji. Yeah. Wow. And uh, if you could also tell me globally what is the most used emoji. Yeah, I'd <laughs> I'd appreciate let me, it. Let me, do a, let me do a quick uh, tab on that. My, mine is probably the fire emoji. Oh, no. Nice. Oh, yeah. Fire. Straight fire. And it's more like three fires. I'm oh, really yeah. Into fire, fire, fire. I've, I've been into the fire emoji lately, too, by the way. You know what I've been into, That's too? That's great. I've been into responding with just random emojis. Like, it doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. I sort of just, like, spin the wheel and then just hit one as a response because it's like, I'm giving you a response, but they're... You know that... The, okay. Yeah. You know that thing in texting conversations and in this whole texting Love culture texting. now, and it, it's almost become its own language texting, mm-hmm. sort of, with its own grammar and all these things? You know that point at which you're talking to someone on text and then the conversation ends, but, like, you could still send that last text that's, like... Okay, gotcha, or whatever, yeah. but you don't have to. That's when I send the random emoji. Well, so I, I was recently introduced to a new line of emojis that is kind of inappropriate, mm. but but I'm a big fan because it usually gets a reaction, and pe- it's either like, "What is that?" or "Oh, oh, what what are you doing?" Right, right. And that is the eggplant squirt. You do an eggplant, oh, yeah. you do yeah. a squirt, yeah, yeah. and it's a little phallic. It's a little uh, is a it little fruit? phallic. Okay, it's phallic. But but I, but then it sort of evolved to just writing eggplant squirt. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, it sort of evolved. I, I demojied. Now almost. that's funny Ooh. on a different level. Yeah. I yeah. like that. Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> so that was number one. So Where funny. Did we go. Number two. <laughs> number two. Did you ever have an AOL Instant Messenger? I and did. If so, what was your screen name? You know what? My screen name was Trigo. T R I G G O, and it was because. I mean, I think I got it when I was in, like, fifth grade, and I was really into Tigger from Winnie the Pooh, and that was taken, a fellow redhead. Uh, and yeah. Tigger was taken, and Trigger was taken, but Trigo was not taken. Yeah. So that was my... That was the one. A fellow redhead. Yeah, that was my, that was my AOL. That was uh, number three, who is your celebrity crush? 
Wow, celebrity. I could, there's there's too many. Uh, my celebrity crush. Oh, here's a good one because I just saw her in something. But I I have always loved Elizabeth Shue. Mm. Big fan. She's sort of oh. got these freckles and she's naturally gorgeous and yeah. And I'll go from Karate Kid to even Las Vegas to you name mm-hmm. it. I'm an Elizabeth Shue fan. Absolutely. Mm. Here, here. Number four. Finish this sentence. Something I could improve upon is. Everything. Something I could improve upon is um, <coughs> is sleeping. Oh. Well, as you know, you're a dad. So yeah. As a good dad, yes, you need some sleep. You need sleep. You know, mm-hmm. it's sort of funny how sleep has evolved from when you stay up till three in the morning, right. and then you. you get a girlfriend and then it's like alright one in the morning and then you get married and it's like 11 at night and you have a kid and it's like god 9.30 bedtime is my yeah. jam yeah well cause you know you're gonna be up at 3 yeah of course exactly yeah. so if I could get some more sleep I, I would like that there you go uh, uh, number 5 what is your spirit animal spirit animal mm-hmm. god these are tough my spirit animal well it's hard cause you know there's the Chinese symbols on the year of the rat, Uh-oh. which isn't very that. That's not my spirit animal. You know what? I'll I'll say rooster. Oh, I'll say rooster, big. big well, you're up rooster. at the same time. Same time again with the red theme. I'm into it. <laughs> and my son is the year of the rooster. Oh, he was okay. Born last year. So there that's you go. It is. Number six. Do you prefer wearing boxers, boxer briefs, tidy whities, or going commando? Oh, boxer briefs all day. Without looking, do you know what color you're wearing today? I am wearing black. Kirkland brand. Oh, that, Costco. I am Costco brand. Yes. Oh, it's like every three months, I just chuck them out and get oh, some yeah. new ones. It's the best. Seattle, baby. Repping Costco. Boom. I love Seattle, by the yeah. way. Great yeah. Great city. Kirkland's a suburb of Seattle. That's why everything's Kirkland. Is it really? Yeah, that's right. Fun fact. Mm-hmm. Um, and number seven. We've come to the end now. It's a lot. It's quicker now. It is quicker. Number seven. The most important question of them all. It doesn't sound right, though, being number seven the most important. I should just see, still say number ten, I think. <laughs> should we make that a thing? <laughs> it's seven questions, but I still just say number ten. It just sounds right. Number ten, the most important question of them all. I ask everybody this question. This is not a joke. I even ask people this in life when I meet people just randomly. It's a good conversation starter at any party. Um, because I believe that your answer to this question tells me everything that I need to know about you. Oh, yeah, low-pressure question. I like that. Sam Daly. Madam Secretary, Sundays, 10 p.m., CBS. Look out for Office Uprising coming in February 2018 and Daily Show. Where, where do we watch that again? YouTube. YouTube. Daily Show on YouTube. Uh, D-A-L-Y, though. That's right. Get it right, people. Here's the question. What is your favorite fruit? Favorite fruit. That I, is, I know. You know, and it's, you know what, that's, it's a loaded question because, like, you kind of want to show off and be like, star fruit or kiwi. I don't eat star fruit or kiwi. Okay, I, I have them for a while. But I, I guess my go to fruit would have to be pineapple. And I'll tell you why. Because my favorite drink is not a Manhattan or a manly whiskey. It's a pina colada. Oh, I think I just fell in love. <laughs> Does that tell you enough about me? That's a wrap, everybody, <laughs> on another edition of the Brent Tavern Show. Uh, Thank you out there for listening live on Adobe Radio, subscribing on YouTube, or wherever you get your podcast. If you like what you heard, people, you know what to do. Tell them. Just tell a friend. Say goodbye, Producer Katie. Goodbye. Producer Katie is on Twitter and Instagram at Katie Licklurk. It's phonetics. They're never going to say it right. (laughs) I'm on Twitter and Instagram at BDAV. There's two V's at the end of it. You can follow the show on any social media, including Facebook at Brett Davern Show. Today's guest, Sam Daly, can be found on Twitter at... The Sam Daly, or at the Sam Daly, depending on how you want to pronounce it. And he's on Instagram, just at Sam Daly. S A M D A L Y. Thanks for being here, man. Thanks for having me. That was me. a lot of fun. That was really fun. Thanks. Uh, so, once again, for Boy Wonder over there, Katie LeClaire over there, and Sam Daly right there, I'm Brett, reminding all of you to be kind and take care of each other. 
We will see you tomorrow. That was our show. Good night, Yasiel Puig. That's it for the Brett Davern Show today. But don't worry, they'll be back tomorrow on Adobe Radio Live, starting at 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific. 